All right, guys, for today's build, I am bringing you the Frigid Angel, as I like to call it, for the Stasis Warlock. This build is going to allow you to freeze basically everything around you and constantly be keeping up with your abilities and just keeping you a very good zone control player. So, starting off with your aspects, we're going to be running, of course, the good old Bleak Watcher, um, holding your grenade button will convert it into a stasis turret that fires floating projectiles that will eventually freeze a target whenever I believe two bursts have hit them. And then we are combining that with glacial harvest. So freezing a target creates stasis shards around the frozen target and the higher tier combatants will create more shards. So. We are then throwing those two aspects with your cold, cold snap grenade. Uh, your melee will, of course, always be the same, and your jump can be whatever you want. I recommend running a healing rift, but of course, if you like to live on the edge, you can run an empowering rift. But jumping onto your fragments, you're going to want to run Whisper of Torment so that you get extra grenade energy every time that you take damage. Whisper of Durance, so slow from your abilities last longer, and those abilities that linger, their duration will also increase, and that nice little bump in strength. Now, I recommend running this because that slow will stick onto targets longer, allowing more time for your stasis turret to be able to freeze them, but I believe that this also allows the stasis turret to stay up longer. I'm not 100% on that, but I, that's my head cannon, and we're rolling with it. So going on to the next one, we got Whisper of Conduction. So nearby stasis shards will track to your position and a nice little bump in resilience and intellect. This makes it to where you don't have to go tracking down the stasis shards every time you freeze someone because you will be freezing a lot and you will actually hit a glacial harvest cooldown, which I didn't even know was possible before this build. But the final fragment will be Whisper of Chains. When you are near a frozen target or a friendly stasis crystal, you take reduced damage and get increased recovery boost. And, like I said, you're going to be freezing everything around you, so you're almost always going to have that damage resist. Jumping onto the exotics that you're going to need for this build, we're starting off with your weapon will be Agar Scepter. It's very good for this build, I will explain why in just a second. And then we are combining it with the Ozzyomancy Gloves, so that you get two Cold Snap Grenades, and they also recharge faster on uh, direct impact. And they also have increased Seeker Distance. But having that extra Cold Snap means, one, we got two Stasis Turrets right off the bat if we want. Or you can use your Stasis Grenade to create one turret and then throw out one Cold Snap to get Grenade Energy back and freeze extra targets. But first we're going to give into the mods for this build. On your helmet, you're going to want to run a Stasis Elemental Affinity so that you can run elemental shards. Stasis shards count as elemental wells for you. And since every time we freeze a target, we are creating those stasis shards, we will be getting wells all the time for extra ability energy and some other things I will get to in just a moment. And then we are also going to be running a harmonic siphon, so that rapid weapon uh, final blows matching your subclass will create an orb of power. And then personally, I like to run Power Preservation. Just give extra orbs to your teammates whenever you get final blows with your super. And it's just a nice little thing to slot in there. But you can definitely change that one if you wish. Going on to the gauntlets. Uh, the elemental affinity does not particularly matter. But the mods you're going to want to run are Font of Might. Preferably the seasonal mod so that it only takes one energy cost and then I like to run overload rounds just in case you hit an overload champion and Trace rifle reloader so that agars will reload faster The chess piece is going to be a stasis elemental affinity with well of restoration So picking up a stasis elemental well or as I mentioned before the shards as well will grant you additional 
energy for your ability that has the lowest energy. So re whether it's your grenade, melee, or rift, you're getting that extra little boost in a uh, cooldown time or reduction in it. And then I like to run sniper damage resist for this build simply because your turrets and your melee and everything will be able to freeze almost everything nearby you. So your only real dam or uh, damage or hang up will be farther away targets. And so this just gives you a little bit of extra resist against them. And then trace rifle reserves so that you have extra ammo for agars just to make sure that you don't run out of ammo. On the boots, again, your elemental affinity doesn't particularly matter, but I prefer to run arc so that I can run inner, uh, invigoration so that you get a reduced melee cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power because, to be honest, in this build, I kind of neglected the strength stat because I didn't think it was really that important for this build. But what you are going to want to make sure you're running is elemental charge. So becoming charged with light by picking up an elemental well. And if it matches, if the well matches your subclass type, you gain two additional, uh, or you gain two stacks of charge with light. So every time you're picking up a well or those shards, you're going to be coming charged with light. <clears throat> so that charge with light is going to feed into firepower, which is why you want to run a solar elemental affinity on your bond so that you can take advantage of charge with light mods so that you regain a portion of your grenade whenever you use it, consuming one stack of charged light, which you will almost always be charged with light. And then I like to run Bomber, just because that way, if you need a little bit of extra grenade energy, just drop your rift, and there you go. Easy peasy. So, moving on to the weapons. Of course, I've already mentioned Agars a few times, but for your secondary, I like to personally run Funnel Web with Perpetual Motion and Frenzy just because it gets that extra up close aggressive uh, damage and nice uh, stat boost with Perpetual. It's just a really good up close combat weapon. But if you're choosing to play it a little bit more conservatively, I would recommend Sweet Sorrow with Triple Tap and Demolitionist because Triple Tap will be really easy to hit all your uh, precision headshots because the targets are going to be frozen so they're not going to be moving on you at all. And then combining that with Demolitionist of course to get your grenade back much faster. <clears throat> and then for your final weapon, unfortunately I do not currently have it. Uh, the role that I want which would be Perpetual Motion and Frenzy. Um, simply because with Font of Might from your mods, it's going to be getting that extra damage bu uh, buff, and then Frenzy on top of that will just be really nice. Perpetual Motion for the stat boost. And not this season, but next season coming up, I believe it is season 17, Machine Guns are getting a buff to their damage and overall like uh, just usability to make them more viable. And I believe that this will be a really great contender to put with this build and just take it even farther. So right before we get to the last little gameplay uh, demonstration, I'm going to show my destiny for anyone that might care. Uh, I chose the Ash Raven's Hood uh, from a old Iron Banner armor uh, ornament because to me it just always had that like warrior angel look to it and I just really felt like it went well with the frigid angel uh, look and then the Ozzyomancy gloves just jagged looks sharp and icy anyways on its own doesn't have an ornament and then the corrupting echo robes and boots for the chest piece and boots are just they look really nice for that sharp jagged frigid look and then the bond is the Street Scholar bond, and I went with the Jankara shader for that because I felt like it just looked like a ring of ice around my arm and it fit really well. And then the shader I used on everything else, of course, was Xeno Silver. So just for a quick little uh, demonstration, you take out a weaker target with agars, and that freezes them then creating those two wells for you and giving you stasis elemental boost ramping up that damage
And then in bigger groups, you can throw out a stasis turret before you enter the room, freeze a couple people up, and throw out your toilet snap as well if you want, and then that gets you grenade energy and freezes even more targets, giving you more of the stasis shards for wells, giving you that elemental uh, boost for your weapons, and it all just synergizes so well. So, this has been your Frigid Angel build for Season of the Risen uh, Stasis Warlock. I will definitely be taking a look at this build again in the upcoming season after Machine Guns have gotten their little buff. But that is all for today. Uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I post a new build, whether for Warlock, Hunter, or Titan, is up in the air. Basically, every week on Wednesdays. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.